Jayate. Yes, the first verse is about the glories of Krishna Sankirtan. Right? There is Japa, there is Kirtan, and there is Sankirtan. Did you do your Japa today? Yes! How many rounds? Four. Four rounds? Okay. How many rounds? Six rounds? Eleven. Eleven rounds? Huh? Five rounds? Okay. So you all did how many? Twelve. I have to finish one. Oh, okay. So you did some Japa. Jaffa, did you do kirtan? Yes. yes. Where? Yeah. Yeah. Here. You don't do kirtan at home? Yes. Yeah. I do, I do. Huh? Every morning? Yes. Yeah. yeah, you do kirtan, you do japa and kirtan. What about saying kirtan? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. There is japa, we're chanting. Of the beads, right? You're chanting. And then there is Kirtan. And then there is Sankirtan. So Sankirtan is for everyone's benefit. Right? We spoke about Sankirtan yesterday. So this verse, Lord Chaitanya has given us a very important verse. And it describes seven of the qualities or seven of the benefits we get from chanting the holy name. So we had only introduced two of them. We spoke about Cheto Darpana Marjana. Who would like to explain to me what is the meaning of Cheto Darpana Marjana? One of the ladies. Yes? No? Someone? One of our ladies, yes, Madhiji? Chaita Guru is the Guru in our heart, and Darpana is a mirror, and Marjana is cleaning. So while chanting, we cleanse our heart. Yeah. The mirror in our heart. Chaita, we said Chaita means the heart, and there's a Chaitya Guru, that's the Lord in the heart. But there's also the individual, where the, there's two souls in the heart, right? There's the Atma and the Paramatma. So, uh, when we say Cheto Darpana Marjanam, we want to cleanse, we're not, we're not going to clean the, you don't need to cleanse the heart of the Guru, you know, Krishna's in the heart, Krishna's not affected, Krishna's not dirty. What's dirty? Our own heart, our own self, our own consciousness has become covered, right? We said, the example about the dust coming on the mirror. In the same way, our consciousness has become polluted. Pollution. Do you have a lot of pollution here? Is there a lot of pollution? Yes. Where? In your heart? Yes. In your mind, yeah? In our heart. A lot of pollution. What is that pollution? What is the dirt, the dust in the heart? Material desire, the ignorance, the ignorance which causes material desire. And material desires cause us to do sinful activities, right? So, Cheto Darpana Marjanam. We want to cleanse the mirror of the heart. Then we will see. When the mirror is clean, then we will see. What will we see? We hope we will see Krishna. At least we will see ourselves. We will come to know our own self as not being different, as being different from the body. We will know ourselves as a soul, as an atma. All right, you all know you're not the body. Right? Yeah, we're soul. So, but we have to cleanse the heart. We have to cleanse the consciousness. So, the first benefit, Cheto Darpana Marjanam, that cleanses the heart of all the dust accumulating. 
for years together, not just for this lifetime, for many lives. Yes? Then what's the second benefit? Maha Davagni Nirvapanam. Chetor Darpanam Marjanam Bhava Maha Davagni Nirvapanam. We spoke about the Maha Dava Agni. Yes? Which one is going to answer? All right, this boy? The fire in the forest. The fire in the forest, yes. Are we in a forest? No. We're in the forest? Why? Why are we in the forest? Because we're in this material world. Yeah, this material world is compared to a forest. And is there a fire? Yes. Yeah? Do they have fires here in Dubai? No. Yes. yes. Yeah, can also have fire. Can we have a fire? Do we have a fire in, in our body? No. Yes. 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 What, what causes a fire? Um, material desires. Yes. Uh, you, you agree? Yeah. Material, material existence is full of problems. Do you have any problems? Yes. Really? Exams. Sometimes? Sorry, exams. Exams are a problem. Yeah. You won't touch this. Yeah, sometimes I'm sure even even you you people although you're young you touch, still you I'm sure you also sometimes have problems. Because that is the nature of this world. Right? The material world. How is it described in the Bhagavad Gita? Oh, scholar, pundit of Bhagavad Gita, yeah, Dukala Yam Ashashvatam. Do you know the meaning? What is the meaning? Dukala Yam Ashashvatam. Yes? Temporary and? Full of miseries. Full of miseries, yes. Just like Himalaya and Pustakalaya or Bhojanalaya. Dukalaya, place of misery. Yes? So this world is it's not always a happy place. And whose fault? Who, who are we blaming? Who gives us all the trouble? We can't blame. We can't say, oh, it's all your fault, or it's her fault, or it's his fault. It's our fault. Is it? Is it our fault? It may be. <laughs> yeah. We, Actually, nobody may be responsible. It may not be anyone's fault. It is just the nature of this world. It is the nature. With, who caused the fire in the forest? Remember I told you how, how did that? It rubs together. Who, who made them rub together? Nobody. The wind. The wind blew, and the dry wood rubbed together, made a spark. Nobody was to blame, but we got a big fire. In the same way, in our life, in the material world, there may be problems. Who causes it? Nobody caused it. It's just the nature of the material world. But if we chant the holy name, the chanting of the holy name, will put out the fire of material existence. Why? Because the holy name is like a big rain cloud. Just like we gave the example, when there's a forest fire, we need a big rain cloud. You don't get many rain clouds here, huh? In the desert. Two days before you got some rain. Very rare. You, you don't get much rain here. But you need a big rain cloud to put out the fire. So that rain cloud is like the holy name. When we chant the holy name, then it, it puts out the fire of material existence. We don't feel the pain 
We don't feel, even if we are in the fire, we won't be disturbed by it. We will be able to tolerate it by taking shelter of the Holy Name. So this is the power of the Holy Name. So it puts out the fire of material existence. And then the third, the third quality of the Holy Name is described. How does the verse go? Cheto Darpana Marjanam then Shreya Kairava Chandrika Vritaranam Vidya Okay, Shreya Karaiva Chandrika Vritaranam Vidya Vritaranam Yeah, but that's the, that's the fourth one. We're going to look at the third quality. Vidya Badu Jivanam is number four. But we have to look at number three first of all. Shreya Karaiva Chandrik Avritaranam. Shreya, do you know these words? In, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, they write about these two words. Shreya. Oh. There, there is. <laughs> <laughs> We're out of pens, maybe. Let's see. So there is Shreyas and Preyas. Shreyas means what is really good for us. And Preyas is what we think is good for us. Right? This is good for us today, but it may not be good in a long time. And Shreyas is what is good in a long time. So which one do you want? The yeah. one that yeah. you You sure? Yeah. yeah. Shreya. So Shreya means to give blessings, to give benediction, right? We should, what do we say? Asherba. Yeah? To give the blessings, the benedictions. Shreya Karaiva Chandrika Vitaranam. Uh, Chandrika, the uh, Chandrika, the rays of the moon. They, the when the in in the in the night when the rays of the moon fall on the white petals of the lily flower, then the flower looks very beautiful. So in the same way, the holy name brings out the good qualities. The holy chanting of the holy name is just like the light of the rays of the moon which fall on the flower and make the flower look very beautiful. In the same way, that when we chant the holy name, then it brings out the good qualities in people. Everyone who chants the holy name must have good qualities because they're chanting the holy name. It is the most important part of Bhakti Yoga, right? So that's the third thing, that it, it gives a benediction of all good qualities. Shreya Karaiva Chandika Vitaranam. And then Vidya Vadu Jivanam. Vidya means? Are you studying Vidya or Avidya? Yeah. Every day? Yeah. Don't, don't you go to school? Yeah. What do you study at school? Math. Is, is that Vidya or Avidya? Avidya. Probably you study it. You have to study both, right? You have to study a lot of Avidya. But you have to use that Avidya in the service of Krishna. Right? Vidya and Avidya. If you don't know how to read and write, you won't be able to read Srimad Bhagavatam. You won't be able to write a nice Vyasa Puja offering for Srila Prabhupada. Right? You have to be able to read and write, to be a devotee, to study the scriptures. So you have to study some avidya, but it becomes vidya when you use it for Krishna. So vidya vadu. Vadu means? Vado means wife. Vado means the wife. 
and Jiva Nam, the life. So we say the chanting of the holy name is the life of all transcendental knowledge. Yes, the life of all transcendental knowledge. Because Vidya will include also Avidya. You cannot just have simply only Vidya. So if we have Vidya, we will also know about the Avidya. It includes everything, both material and spiritual. Just like we say, one who knows Krishna, he knows everything. We studied all the Vedas. They know everything. Right? Do you know everything? Then you don't know, maybe you don't know Krishna. Do you know Krishna? Yes. But how well do you know Krishna? How much do you know, how much do you know about Krishna? Hmm? Something, you know something about Krishna. But you don't know a lot. There's so much more you have to learn about Krishna. We have to become conscious of Krishna. So, Vidya, Vadu, Jivanam, the life of all transcendental knowledge. Transcendental knowledge is like the wife. Without her husband, when the husband's away traveling, then the wife is at home and she's lonely and she's thinking, when will the, my husband come back? But, so like that, knowledge gets life from the holy name. If we have knowledge, but you don't have the holy name, it's like a woman without a husband. She's always thinking, when will my husband come? So like that, transcendental knowledge gets life from the holy name. So, Vidya Vadu Jivanam. And then, next quality is Anandam Buddhi Vardhanam. Anandam Buddhi Vardhanam. And the meaning? Anandam. And it's, it's an ocean. You may think, oh, the spirit soul, is the spirit soul very big? What is the size of the soul? One hundred of one hundred of ten thousand. Yeah, one ten thousandth of the tip of the hair. So, not very big. So we may think, oh, the, if I'm a spirit soul, and my soul is only one hundredth of one hundredth of the tip of a hair, then it means I'm not going to get much happiness. Maybe we may be, we may be worried like that. We may think, oh, I get more pleasure from the body than I get from the soul, because I've got a big body, but I've only got a little. I'm only a little soul. So if I'm only a little soul, maybe I'm not going to get much happiness. Maybe I won't get much pleasure. But Lord Chaitanya said, no, it's not like that. What is it like? He said, it's like an ocean. Have you been swimming in the ocean? Yes. yes. Really? Yes. Yeah. Which yeah. ocean? The one here? No. Hmm? Yeah, around the, the, the Indian Ocean? Arabian Ocean. Yes, yes. Arabian Ocean. Arabian Ocean. Arabian Ocean. Arabian Yeah, here? Okay. So, is it big? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the ocean is so big, so vast, so unlimited, so many different living entities, different creatures living in the ocean there. And they don't have any overpopulation. They're not worried about, oh, there's no space. You know, the ocean is so vast. So, the happiness of chanting the holy name is described to be like that. It's described to be like a big ocean, a huge ocean. Are you, are you tasting the pleasure of the holy name? Yes. Are you? No, it doesn't sound like it. 
Are you getting pleasure from chanting the holy name? Yes. yes. Is it is it like an ocean? Yes. yes. Is it ever increasing? Yes. Expanding? Yes. yes. Just like when you go in the ocean, it never seems to end. It just goes on and on and on. If you're crossing the ocean. You know, you can't swim across the ocean. I was in Malaysia and we went to one place and it was a, a, a place where uh, they had some sailing of boats. We were having a program there and they, they, were, they had some notices up about some woman. She wanted to swim across the ocean. She was going to swim a hundred miles. It was a very short distance from Cuba to Florida. From Cuba to Florida. She wanted to swim. So she had to cross. It wasn't an ocean. It was just some strait or something they called it. But it was a hundred miles and she was going to try to swim. It was going to take her about 60 hours. So that's a lot of swimming. But she couldn't do it because after she'd been swimming for about 10 or 15 hours, she got bit by jellyfish. Have you ever been bit by jellyfish? Yes. Yes? Yeah. I went. Yeah, very painful. You get bit by jellyfish, you have to go to the doctors, you have to get injections, it's very painful. Yeah, so, you know, not, nobody, no, no, no one can swim across the ocean. It's so vast, you know, it takes so much, so long, it takes a long time to cross an ocean. You have to go on a boat. So, we, but we can taste the, the chanting of the name of Krishna. It's like an ocean. That there's so many more experiences to be had in chanting the holy name. That we can awaken more and more pleasure from the chanting. Who's your favorite kirtanier? Whose kirtan do you like the most? Indra. You like Indra Prabhu. How about somebody else? Vaisaki Prabhu. Who? Vaisaki Prabhu. Vaisaki? Yeah? Patri? Patri Prabhu? You like Patri's kirtan? Oh, you all like Patrick's Kirtan. Managers? Whose Kirtan do you like? Govind Swami Maharaj? Govind Swami Maharaj? Yeah? Swami Maharaj. So many different Kirtaniers. When they have Kirtan, you know, like in Mayapur every year now, last few years, they have Kirtan Mela. And devotees will sit there all day in the temple room from morning, 10 o'clock, till 10 o'clock at night. The whole day they're there and they're having Kirtan. And they're just in the ocean of Kirtan, right? And they're not, they forget all about the time. They forget all about Prasadam. Because what are they doing? They're just in the ocean of the holy name. 